Hi, I'm Oliver. This is Deep Cuts, a YouTube channel about music for lovers of music. Today I'm going to do five albums to help you get into post-rock. Post-rock's always been a genre that's really close to my heart personally, probably due to the fact that there's such an instrumental focus and not so much a reliance on lyrics. So sometimes it can exist outside of kind of the mainstream bubble. Post-rock's been described by some people as allowing the listeners imagination to work through the music. Because there's no lyrics to band the ideas together, it means that it's much more of a, a listener response experience. It means that people have very different responses to the same piece of music, a bit like art in that way. Post rock's a very vast genre. It stems from so many different genres of music from prog rock, experimental, new wave, kraut rock. There's so many different genres that post rock's collected from. It doesn't tend to be a genre that evokes that much mainstream appeal because of the lack of, often the lack of lyrics, the languid, lengthy song structures, slow builds to climaxes, sometimes slow builds to no climax. Challenging song structures, which means there's a lot of creativity that's used by these post-rock artists that's free of the shackle of mainstream appeal. Number one, Godspeed You Black Emperor. Lift your skinny fists like antennas to heaven. Skinny fists. Just a beautiful piece of work to start off with. It's a real musical odyssey, four tracks that equate to 87 minutes of music. It just twists and turns and the listener's just never bored. The addition of horn, violin and cello parts in the instrumentation adds a real cinematic quality to the work. With opening track Storm slowly evolving from a quiet orchestral piece of music into this enthralling climax that just builds and builds. Godspeed uses drone on a lot of these tracks which undercuts everything with a bit of menace. The second half of the album is even more diverse in its stylings with screeching guitars, electronic buzz, uh, elegiac percussion and various samples. This is a true journey with peaks and troughs but it's absolutely essential to this genre. Exhausting but essential. Number two, 65 Days of Static, One Time for All Time, released in 2005. I found it really hard to pick a single 65 Days record because in my mind they haven't really put a foot wrong. The Bristol bass band have more recently been experimenting with electronic dance styles. They're even collaborating with Hello Games, an indie games company on their current title No Man's Sky, which is due for release soon. So they're, they're, they're getting a lot more interested from the mainstream than they were before, which is it's good. It's really nice to see these guys getting the recognition that they deserve. This album though harks back to that seething, emotional post-rock that a lot of bands I think probably judge themselves by in the post-rock world now. One Time Full Time uses a lot of electronic sampling and glitchy effects, um, which really changes the, the traditionally heavy instrumentation of the guitars, the bass and the drums, and makes for an even more unique experience when you're listening to it. The glitchy effects cascade and weave through the instrumentation just really adds to the experience. The first track drove through Ghost to Get Here is this electronically rhythmic driven piece with this fragile piano phrase that eventually bursts into this cacophony of, of noise and emotion. On tracks like Await Rescue and Climbing on Roofs, the way that they use the glitchy effects, it almost sounds as if the tracks are going to just stutter and stop at any moment, as if the songs itself are burning your hi-fi as you're listening to them. The final track, Radio Protector, might be one of my favourite tracks of all time. It takes on a similar dynamism of the first track, Drove Through Ghosts, but the piano part is even more mournful and grief-stricken. It's a sad but beautiful way to end an album. Number three, Explosions in the Sky, The Earth is Not a Cold Dead Place, released in 2003. Explosions in the Sky saw a huge increase in popularity um, around the 2003-2004 era when they released this. Um, they became part of uh, the soundtrack to the film Friday Night Lights, which has become a very popular TV show. This, if you like Explosions in the Sky, this is probably a bit of an obvious pick, but I do think this is, in my opinion, one of the creative peaks for them and it's a sound that's been copied by a lot of artists since. From the opening of First Breath After Coma to the sustained quiet final notes of Your Hand and Mine, it's a very easy album to get along with and an easy album to appreciate on a first listen. Each track follows a similar pattern of slow builds, beautiful guitar sounds layered on top of each other, all slowly releasing this crescendo before trickling back down to this reserved quiet. Interesting, I think the, the reason the album feels like it's such a cohesive whole is that every song follows in the same sonic palette. So you have 16th notes, snare rolls, you've got the build-up of guitar lines weaving through each other and a very reverby stadium-like production. As I said, this style has been copied over and over again since this album came out and you can see why it's very beautiful, 
uh, it's very emotive and it's very accessible. Number four, and so I watch you from afar's Gangs, released in 2011. This is playful, muscular fun. Clearly a band that understands its talent and wants to show you that. I suppose you could say they're not unlike New York's Battles, who compose eccentric, occasionally goofy songs that don't take themselves too seriously, but they still command a level of respect because of their musicianship and the quality of their composition. I'm not saying though that this album is wanky, musician-centric, one-upmanship though. The writing is very cohesive. Tracks like Search Party Animal kick in with such a dancey, brilliant drum groove, punctured by these brazen power chords and low as you can go bass. But what's great is after a relative moment of brutality like that, the light-hearted boppy guitars come back in and it just accents the heaviness, which gives the whole album a very unique slant when you listen to it. On the track, seven billion people all alive at once. After a suitably epic build-up, everything cuts out, and then as the drums, bass, and guitar smash back in, we get a children's choir. It's just accenting the music and all these little unique spins that it makes the record sound very vital. Every time I listen to this album, I just feel completely revitalized after it. It's an album that's, that's up uplifting, in its goofiness, its eccentricity, and its muscles as well. Number five, Sire Rose with Olgitis Biaryan, which was released in 1999. And I think I actually just pronounced that correctly. So last up, Sire Rose, the true kings of mood setting, sonic landscaping, Nordic godlikeness. This album was their breakout into the mainstream. After that, you had albums like Tack, which had on the track Hoppy Poller, which was used, I think, for almost every BBC drama, documentary, charity appeal ever since. This, though, has got to be their true peak. This is a multi-instrument masterpiece. You have horns and flutes weaving in and out of treated piano textures, deep digitized bass, guitars played with a cello bow, very lush orchestration. Uh, the lead singer and guitarist, Jonsi, or Jonsi, his, his falsetto vocals melt over the track. And I, th I think that works really well because it feels like the sonic landscape they've created is literally engulfing him. This is actually the only record on the list that has vocals in it. Um, but I feel like th they used the lyric lines and the vocal lines in a very instrumental way um, the vocals are in Icelandic, so if you don't speak Icelandic, I, I suppose that's why uh, you don't feel as connected to the lyrics because you can't understand what they're saying. Also on the track Olsen Olsen, they use a made-up language called Volnenska, Volsenska, something like that. Don't ask, I, ha I have no idea. Point is, this is a very beautiful piece of music, and whether you're into post-rock or you're just into hearing a very gorgeous piece of work you should go out and listen to this so there you have it that's my top five albums for you to get into post rock someone commented on one of the other videos saying that i should do a spotify playlist so i've linked that below so you can listen to all the albums and other featured post rock artists that i would suggest checking out after you've checked out those five albums as before please comment and subscribe rip me apart from my opinions just tell me where i went wrong let's get a discussion going thanks a lot